Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are talking about Hermes items that you might see on the resale market that you should not buy. And at the end, I'm gonna add a couple of things that you that you may happen across happen upon on the resale market that are worth purchasing. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Catherine and my channel is KW Shops. Um, I work in the luxury resale industry, so I am an insider to the whole resale game. I give you shopping tips, care tips, authenticity tips, as well as just general useful, help helpful information in making your designer resale purchases. Uh, so if that's interesting to you, please hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, give this video you a thumbs up and I hope to see you in future videos to come. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the concept of Birkin bait. Uh, if you're not, I'll explain it briefly. So Birkin bait is basically the random items at Hermes that people buy to endear themselves with a sales associate in order to get offered the Birkin or Kelly that they want. As you guys know, this is not my deal. I just interact with it um, in a professional capacity. Uh, this is not something that I plan to ever engage in. It's totally not my jam, uh, but I do hear stories and I do watch this stuff happen from the ground. A lot of these items I definitely do think are Birkin bait. They're items that people buy to have like a good record of spending with the boutique. Uh, down the line, a lot of these purchases end up on the resale market because that's not actually the thing that they wanted. They wanted the bag. They didn't want the little like trinket or whatever. By the way, not everything on this list is going to be Birkin bait necessarily. Um, some of these are items that just are not practical and are just not good buys. I will flesh out the difference, um, so let's get started. First up is the bag, the single bag I think I hate the most out of every bag that I've ever seen created. That is a very big statement and I will probably end up amending it at some point, but for today, this is the bag that I hate the most. And that is the Hermes Gypsy Air. So I have been helping with uh, designer resale transactions since 2013 and there's just sort of like, it, there comes a point where certain things become predictable and what and it happens every single time with this bag. This is the Gypsy Air. As you see, it is very similar similar in style to the Hermes Birkin. Uh, it comes in a variety of sizes. What's notable about this one is that it does have a detachable crossbody strap. It's also adjustable. Um, what everyone looks at this bag and sees is something that is definitely screaming Hermes in the most subtle way possible, only <gasps> it's a crossbody. So it's gonna be more convenient. It's gonna be practical. It's gonna be useful. I'll be able to wear it to the grocery store or whatever. The, that's what everyone thinks going in about this bag and everyone ends up selling it. Let me tell you why. This is the most fussy, awkward bag to actually use, get in and out of. I cannot stand this bag. <laughs> so first of all, um, it has that flap going uh, that goes all the way down. It is very similar to the Birkin because it does have the flap that goes over and then the two straps that close it, except um, on the Birkin, the flaps that the flap is pretty short. Now, I do regard the Birkin as a very, very fussy bag to begin with. Um, we don't have to talk about it today. But the fact that the flap on the Gypsy Air is so much lower it means that there's that much more material to have to navigate your way around in order to get into this bag to get to your things. Just once again, when you think of a crossbody bag, they're gonna that you're gonna be that you're intending to use on errands. Uh, it's something that you want to be able to get in and out of relatively easily, not so fussy. This is not what you want, and this is all that this offers. What I will also show you is that if you do try to leave this bag open, unlike the Birkin, uh, it's a hot mess. It does not look, it does not look put together or chic. It just looks like a slumpy leather mess, and I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I usually not, I usually try not to take too like hard of stances on bags because I know that there are people out there, uh, there are people out there watching this that probably like are falling in love with something. If you were looking for the Hermes Gypsy Air, if I'm the person who stands in your way of purchasing it and you decide to pass on it and go for something else that's better, then I will consider that a win in my book. That means that the video and the time and effort that went into making it for you to see it was worth it. Do not buy this bag. It juts out weirdly. Um, the fact that like 
One thing that no one seems to really appreciate about it is up more narrow towards the top. You guys pro probably, if you've followed me for a while, you know that's something that I always, I always highlight because it means that there are going to be less things that are going to be able to fit inside of the bag. The whole bag is wrong. Throw the whole bag away. <laughs> You're going to see this on the resale market. And the kicker is that they are on the more affordable side when it comes to uh, Hermes bags. Um, I think that you can find them anywhere from like three to like $7,000, depending on the condition and colors and sizes, etc. So on paper, it looks like a bargain and it looks like, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting an Hermes bag for a fraction of the price. But that bag is a nightmare. If you see it on the resale market, look the other way. So part of this same exact phenomenon is the Hermes her bag. You guys, I see the thought process happen in real time. So when you are scrolling, let's say through um, maybe a resale website, and now let's say you type in Hermes bags, in your search bar, set your sort filter from low to high. Um, one of the bags that you're likely to see come up first as the lowest price Hermes bag very often is the Her bag. You can find these anywhere from like 900 to like $1,500. It is much more on the affordable side of Hermes. Oh, and what I'm trying to tell you is that that should be a red flag. To be very honest, what they have to offer, even on the resale market for what, you know, doesn't make me like throw up a little bit in my mouth when I see the price. <laughs> really isn't all that great. Um, so everything about this bag sounds great. First and foremost, it's Hermes, so it has that branding attached to it. Second of all, this is a two-in-one bag. So it sounds like you're getting two Hermes bags for the low, low price of like, I don't know what, $1,200. It, like, it sounds like a dream. It almost sounds like it could be too good to be true. These are a set of bags that you're supposed to attach to the like leather part. And unfortunately, I don't have one here to show you. Hi guys, this is Editing Catherine uh, cutting in here. I just want to let you know that the Her Bag has been updated, it seems. Um, it is now no longer two bags in one, which to my opinion honestly is like another mark against it uh but the new ones do not have the second bag that you're supposed to be able to interchange it with um just in case that clears up any confusion it's changed over the years the ones that i'm talking about are available on the resale market um and they typically have been made anywhere from the early to mid 2000s i'm just kind of guessing you would live a very well you know satisfactory life without it and um we're gonna get back to the video but <sighs> the her bag no but the way that it affixes is just imagine like so first you have to get the pieces onto the canvas bag and in order to open it up um you have to also like like undo the straps once again to, in order to, to open it you undo you un you loosen the straps uh, so you pull the straps from under this little like metal clasp thing um, the, and then there is a hole in the leather flap of the bag, I hope I'm explaining this right, that you open up, um, that you open up, that but it has a circle in it that a metal piece is cut through. I hope that made sense. I will try to have as much like infographics on on screen as possible in order to properly convey that because explaining it was kind of a rough ride. Think about how hard it was for me to describe how to do it. Imagine actually having to do that and actually having your things inside and being once again at the grocery store at checkout, getting all of this ready together in order to pay or to get your phone when it rings or whatever. I know I said I hate the Gypsy airbag the most of all bags today, but this one is not far off. And I do have to say that this is probably one of the worst design bags of all time. Now they make this in a variety of uh, different styles. Like, like they make a travel bag, which is just inexplicable to me. Um, they make it in a backpack style. And, and they also like just a variety of like different like types of this bag um, and then once again if you want to see any uh, more examples of these I will have some link down below in the description box uh, be sure to go check that out this is one that gets people every single time it never fails and what always happens what always always happens zero percent failure rate is you see this bag you see the price you see that it's Hermes 
I, and oh my god, don't let it come with an orange box. And all of a sudden you think that you now have an Hermes bag for like $1,200, $1,500. And it just turns out to be the fussiest piece of crap that you have ever ventured to put on your shoulder. I would love to know like the Hermes, the Hermes her bag that you find on the resale market. I would love to know how many times each of them changed hands because it's a mistake that every single person makes and they all sell it. They all sell it because it's unusable. <laughs> so once again, you're gonna see it, you're gonna scroll through the Ebays and the Tradesies of the world, and you're gonna see the Hermes her bag, you're gonna see that price, and you're gonna move past it because you saw this video and you know that that bag is a nightmare, a literal nightmare, one to skip. The next thing we're gonna get into is the Hermes Click H's and Click Clack bracelets. Now, I'm of two minds of this when you see them on the resale market. First and foremost, I think that at the price point, these are usually not so far off to justify, uh, not so far off the retail price to kind of, in my mind, justify buying them new from the store. They retail at about $620 last time I checked. Uh, the correct info will be down below once once again. I think that the pricing usually is not so far off. To get one in good condition will probably run you about $500. So it is a savings of $120, which is better than a savings of zero. Uh, but you know, you can do better. Unless you really happen to be a lover and purveyor and collector of the Hermes enamel bracelets, certain color that you're looking for, then I would just buy them new in the store. Um, that is to say also that the condition on these, so the thing about these bracelets is that they will scratch. They scratch, they scratch, and they're, they're gonna scratch immediately. So on the one hand, you could either like save yourself the stress of having like watch the first scratch happen by buying it pre-loved, or you could, you know, have the in-store experience or whatever. Um, to be honest, I would not personally want to have the in-store experience. I've definitely heard some stories about that, that uh, everyone comes in for the bracelet and the, you know, the sales associates all but like roll their eyes at you. I'm thinking about Design District and there are reasons. I would feel like the sales associates would feel like that their time was being wasted and that just is not enjoyable for me. That's why I do buy, it's among the many reasons why I do shop on the pre-love market, uh, just because I don't like that feeling and, but I do still like the thing. Uh, and another thing too, just wanna remember, like I said, since they do scratch and people do wear the heck out of these, so a lot of the time you find them and they're not in such great condition. So when they are more affordable, they're kinda beat up um, kind of tarnished, definitely scratched, possibly dirty. So you just kind of have to make that judgment call for yourself. But again, two minds of this. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? So I'm not so, so worried about, you know, unsuspecting pre-loved shoppers falling prey to the Kelly clutch style bags. Um, like either Kelly clutch style or like different other styles that are like Kelly adjacent. However, like these are just, they're they're not good bags. They're not good bags, and people never enjoy enjoy them. Maybe you'll see them on you know an odd Instagram post here and there, but uh, they just really don't have that functional functionality and practicality. These are things that people buy from the boutiques because they are trying to get something else. That one, like it doesn't stand up. You have to like literally rest it on the table if you're like out at dinner or something like that. Like. Like the thought of resting a bag that expensive on a table at like a bar or like, I don't know, some, somewhere, any anywhere near a liquid just like makes me itch. <laughs> so spare yourself the anxiety, save the money. If you are into clutches that you have to rest on tables, maybe get one that's not such, that's not so hard to get in and out of. That's the other thing I just can't deal with these bags is that they're really, really difficult to use unless you're trying to bait your Birkin, then you don't need to spend your money on this. So this last one, I'm just putting on this list because I hate it. I hate this bag. I'm so biased. I hate this bag. This is the Picatine by Hermes. I hate it. I really do not like this bag at all. This is one that I think that, especially lately, they have been like more, 
more readily available in boutiques. I have seen a couple of them um, unboxed uh, new from the store. So that's definitely one that, pe that people are like out here buying. Um, it comes in this beautiful big orange box because the bag is like so like bulky. But what it is, it's just like a little leather sack with like little handle just like this. And I think that I think that it doesn't look like good looking and elegant like I just don't think it does that. You have to carry it here just like this in your hand. It, it may make it to the crook of your arm depending on what size you get, but it's just it's just a little a little leather sack and I don't like them. Outside of me just personally not liking the bag. These are bags that like people do use. So they they get they look used and they look like really like schlumpy. They look like little little mini potato sacks and you know with like excessive corner wear and just because corner wear and scratches and all kinds of stuff and the leather over time it they're usually made of togo leather and that with no reinforcement because this bag has no reinforcement whatsoever um it just it loses all of its shape and structure um you guys know that i am a structure fiend so this obviously would not work for me but just over time they don't look good and and they do still have like the Hermes like name behind them so people do try to charge more money for them and I think in bad condition you might find one now for in between two and three thousand dollars and honestly I think that there's just so many better things to do with two to three thousand dollars that's that's what I think <laughs> okay so now we're gonna brighten the video up a little bit and we're gonna talk about the things that, that are worth buying on the resale market when you do happen upon them. Uh, first up, I have scarves and twillies. These are such great purchases for the resale market is that they are relatively affordable. Um, you can find a great scarf for around $300. Um, and also the twillies. Twillies are like 120 and now once again, they sell for the same or slightly higher than they do retail. But it's just such a low, num a relatively low number um, that I think it's justifiable in some weird way. And by the way, quick shout out to the Hermes website for showcasing this beautiful model with the cornrows. Um, it's definitely something great to see. Uh, props to them. So a few years ago, I did want to go into Hermes and, and buy myself a set of Twillies. It's one pro tip if you're buying Twillies always buy two always buy two you will find something else to do with that second one but it's just it's just good to have two you're gonna want to one day you're gonna want to put it on a bag with two handles and personally i think that if a bag has two handles both of them should have twillies on them so sorry no naked straps if you have a twilly a few years ago i did um have like a random itch to buy a new set of twillies at from the hermes boutiques and for whatever reason, what they had available just was not like registering. I just wasn't loving what I saw. They just, it, they weren't having a good season. Um, on the resale market, you get, like, it is almost innumerable how many scarves and prints and colorways and sizes that you can find out there. You can find stuff that's super unique and vintage and different. And, and some of them are like off kilter and weird. And some of them are more classic. There's just, an unlimited number of op an unlimited number of options out there what in luxury i think is relatively inexpensive you can find something that's absolutely amazing definitely worth looking at definitely worth purchasing and there's so many great things you can do with them obviously there's a million ways to wear scarves um but you can also have them framed and, and hung on walls that's something i'm considering thinking about doing behind here and this with this giant big white space but we have not decided yet Okay, so next up, you guys are going to think I'm crazy, <laughs> and you're probably right. Um, the ceramic homewares, I think that some of them are like printed really, really beautifully. And for example, there's this one sushi plate. I know this sounds crazy, but there's a sushi plate on Fashion File that I've had my eye on that I want to use as like a little trinket tray for my bracelets on my bag shelf. I think that they make great gifts. I, and obviously we're not talking about using them to eat off of. Uh, we're talking about using them for decoration, for something beautiful. I just think that they're like a cool little like knickknack. And again, lots of different prints and styles and they just lo look really elegant and luxurious. Um, with home decor so um, I have my eye on one in particular and uh, I do think that they are worth buying 
And the other thing too is that I'm not sure exactly how much the one I'm looking at costs retail, but I just don't know that they're going to have the exact print and style that I want, very similarly to the scarves. Uh, so now while I did mention bracelets earlier, um, I'm gonna say that the leather bracelets, I, I do think that you just have to be careful with the bracelets that you do select to purchase. Um, I really like, I really prefer the leather ones generally, except for this, I love this. Um, but I love the leather bracelets from Hermes, I think that. So in regards to the leather bracelets, I just find that they are a little bit more unique generally. Um, there's a ton of great stuff out there to find. So many colors and styles and single tour, double tour, triple tour, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Uh, definitely be on the lookout for the Hermes leather bracelets and, and enamel ones if you can find a good one. So next up I'm going to talk about an affordable-ish Hermes bag you may find out there that I actually think is cool and worth buying. Uh, this is called the So Kelly. This one is sort of a bucket bag with the Kelly strap detail. Um, I just think this is just a cool take on the Kelly bag. It's a little, again, I like to go for more unique stuff that still has the um, designer elements that are like pretty recognizable, but I just think this is this is a cool bag. Although it doesn't have the structure that I would tend to crave, I just think that, um, I don't know, just a really different one that doesn't look so fussy and annoying like some of the others. They're not going to be cheap. I wouldn't refer to them as affordable, but in relative terms, um, they're a lot they tend to go for a lot less money than, um, you know, some of the like higher crazy bags. Also, this bag does have a lot of uh, practicality where other bags in this price range tend to not. And last up is a very, very popular bag. These are the Evelyn's. Um, they come in a variety of sizes. I think it is four sizes, I want to say. This is another one to be careful about for condition reasons because these are bags that people do wear and beat up every day. They have made this bag for at least, I want to say, 15 or 20 years. There have been a couple of iterations for it. I do want to caution you, the thing to be on the lookout for with these bags um, is that they may have interior staining. These bags are unlined. Uh, and they just use one single piece of leather. So it's like it's like it has a suede interior. That is gonna lend itself to staining and scratching and, and just, you know, not looking so great in photos very easily. And I definitely think that that may contribute um, to, uh, to some of the, you know, more affordable price points on them. Not my personal taste or style. Uh, they come in both Epsom and Togo, I wanna say. The Epsom is gonna be, once again, a little bit more structured, a little bit more rigid, um, but over, and it's, it's gonna have that a little bit more like texture and scratchiness. It almost reminds me of like Prada Safiano leather, but like a little bit like thicker, kind of. Very popular, definitely worth considering. If you find them on the resale market, these were available on Hermes.com not too long ago, but um, definitely just be on the lookout for those as well. You know, one thing they always say about the Hermes Evelyn, like it, all the Hermes purists, the, all the Hermes purists and snobs are always like, oh, well, you know, uh, the ace is supposed to go in the back. Fine, maybe it is, except, you know, back when they had it on their website, that's not how they displayed the front facing photo. Like, in the history of every, you know, e-commerce platform, the main front-facing photo that you see as you're navigating through the website tends to be the front of the bag, and they have the H on it. So, I don't know. Someone should tell the e -com department at Hermes.com. Just saying. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, these were what to skip and what to buy from Hermes on the resale market. Beware of the Birkin bait. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!